and welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I'm recording here in the middle of the day on Thursday. We had kind of a short market week because of the Monday holiday for Memorial Day. And, and yet, even in the short week, we decided to compress an awful lot of market volatility into one week. Started off the day on Tuesday down 400 points. At one point, it was down 500 in direct response to the commotion in Italy over the weekend, a little more political drama. Uh, for those keeping score, I think this is the seventh time we've had sort of U.S. market reaction to some kind of escapade over in Europe since 2010, several of which were Greece-driven in the past. We had Cyprus at one point. A lot of people had never heard of the country of Cyprus. That lasted a couple of days. Obviously, remember Brexit and so forth and so on. And, and so our perspective, I mean, I did write an article much more exhaustively covering this very subject because I have sort of a nuanced view on it, which is that short term, it's a non-story for U.S. market participants. Intermediate term, um, I absolutely do believe, and I don't know what intermediate means. Uh, maybe you could call it long term, but at some point, I do believe that the can kicking going on in Europe will have to come to an end, and that will be disruptive to direct European investors, and obviously there will be some contagion effect, uh, volatility spillover in the U.S. for a time. I, I doubt it will prove very substantive. Um, and then longer term, I think that the sooner this all happens, the better, because there's frankly a lot of uh, innovation and entrepreneurial spirits in Europe we'd love to invest in more heavily. And that macroeconomic pressure of heavy indebtedness, not dealing with their structural issue of a monetary union, but not a fiscal union, um, the disparate uh, treatments in which certain countries, depending on what their economic makeup is, how the euro benefits them versus other countries. A lot of times that is pitted as Germany versus the periphery. Sometimes it can be more complicated than that. Uh, so my point being, I don't believe that this experiment of the euro, the shared currency, is going to last. But I don't know if it's going to be 50 years. I mean, that's actually a very legitimate possibility. Or um, three years until certain countries, uh, maybe a coalition of countries, decide to start moving the needle there. So, so it's impossible to trade around. I would never dare do something like that anyways. And on the intermediate side, all I can say is it represents a significant compression of opportunity by directing by investing directly in Europe. So short term, it's noise. And then I started off by saying Tuesday, we we're down 400. And then Wednesday, we were up, you know, over 300. So you made most of that back right away. Now, here as I'm recording on Thursday, we're down a couple hundred points. It's a little deceiving because actually the S&P is only down 10 or 11 points. So the Dow is, for some reason, on a percentage basis, down over double what the S&P is, which usually means there's one or two particular companies. I'd have to get deeper into my screen to unpack it for you. But yeah, there, there is a little misleading indicator in the market here on Thursday. And it's mostly driven around the trade and tariff developments, the Trump administration re kind of barking out on trade and tariff stuff today. Uh, steel, aluminum again, so, you know, the same old song and dance. You get kind of tired of talking about it after a while. Uh, so all that to say um, that we we definitely believe that there is a real issue in Europe, and yet we don't believe this is the story that will end up playing that issue out. So that's, I think, the big takeaway for the week. The bull market in the U.S. is alive it is in a very flat line, trendless period right now, giving us a great opportunity for dividend reinvestment, which we're making the most of. Uh, significant dividend growth. I um, will tell you that uh, some research done this week is indicating a lot of debt reduction being uh, uh, taking place from the repatriation of foreign profits out of corporate tax reform. Um, so... Uh, you, you know, the share buybacks we expected, the dividend growth we expected, the wages and bonuses we expected, some degree of M&A we expected, but a lot of really healthy debt reduction, which I think is good for the overall economy and sets the table for, you know, one, nothing holds back an economy or a company than over indebtedness. 
So by kind of deleveraging to some point, it enables uh, another leg of growth in our opinion. So I see that as a healthy thing. So the conversation center largely around Italy. Um, we encourage you very much to read dividendcafe.com. Uh, there's a lot of charts this week about the extension of the bull market. We compare Bitcoin volatility over the last six months to the S&P volatility and and uh, so forth and so on. Uh, there's also a chart comparing the fundamentals in Europe to the fundamentals in the United States. Um, I don't mean to just come on the video and tell you to go to DividendCafe.com, but this week there's more than normal matters that require sort of visual aid and um, when I'm, uh, anyway, I, I'll leave it there. Um, read DividendCafe.com, that's what I'll say. But hopefully you've gotten a little bit of uh, understanding of what's taking place in the markets this week and what we're thinking. We're not responding out of big angst to what's taking place in Italy, although we certainly think it could lead to more rounds of sputtering volatility. Uh, but frankly, um, we have seen this song so many times, seen this play so many times, and uh, it's really amazing how many times people re-engage in that path. I'll leave it there. Any questions, reach out to us anytime. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for watching Dividend Cafe video.